Welcome to Tech Brothers Zamero. In this video, we are going to learn how to create serverless SQL pool database and external table. So, what exactly is a serverless SQL pool? Serverless SQL pool in Azure Synapse is a pay per query distributed query engine that enables users to run the T-SQL queries directly on the data stored in Azure Data Lake Storage without the need to provision or manage dedicated computer resources. So, here are the key features no infrastructure management is required query data in csv parquet or json formats cost efficient only pay for the data you query supports open row set and external tables so let's take a look at how we can create a serverless sql pool database there are two ways that we can use azure synapse studio and where we can use the ui to create the database or we can use the uh, create a database statement to create the database so now let's go to the azure synapse studio and uh, create the database from there to do that you will be going to the data here and uh, then uh, you will be clicking on the workspace so once you are in the workspace you will be clicking here on the plus sign and add new resource so you will send uh, a sql database so and here it gives you two options uh, sql pool type so serverless or dedicated in our case we are going to go with the serverless so and it is very simple you can provide the name so i'm going to go call it tech db and that's what our serverless sql pool database it will be created real quick you can see right there it is created and it has external tables it has external resources views schemas and security there is no really billing for this one because uh, no data is stored for this uh, database. So all the files and everything is sitting in the ADLS uh, and uh, you will be making only connection to those files by using external tables. Uh, so uh, such as in dedicated pools, uh, when we will create a database, the tables can be created. Uh, here you cannot create any table. Uh, now let's go to another way to create the database so remember go to de de develop and here you will click on the add new resource sql script and now we can simply write our uh, statement create database test db in this case if you see that i am connected to the built-in that's our serverless sql pool and you don't have to make any changes here you can simply leave this to master now if we run this statement it's okay already exists i'm going to go ahead and say db1 and now it is creating a second database so now if i will go to data again go to workspace again and here you see we have a sql databases and refresh and here we are going to see our test one created so these are different ways to create the uh, databases in serverless sql pool they are important to create because if you are querying the same files over and over, it is a great idea to create the external tables and then simply you can come to the external table and query your files. Now let's go to the uh, files here. Let me show you. You go to linked here and uh, one of the things we have right here, let me close this. So here you have Azure Data Lake Storage 2 and uh, this is our Synapse container that we attach to our uh, synapse analytics at time of uh, creating our workspace uh, so see right there that's what it is uh, now in this container i have a folder called input and i have some files sitting here i have a parquet file i have csv file sitting here now if i want to create external table there are a few items i have to create uh, one of them is uh, called the data source uh, okay so you have to create the data source you have to create the file format and then you have to create uh, the table uh, so all these things has to be done so i will put this link in the description so you can also study from there but uh, sometime you would not remember all the script so you have to go to the website take a look but there is an easy way to do all those steps so right click right click on this uh, uh, file and go to the new sql script and say create a external table once you do that it's going to ask you some question and then it's going to create uh, the script uh, that will create uh, the data source that will create the, the file format and also the table definition okay find it is back here and it will ask you some question so according to your file you can answer those questions let's say in field limit uh, terminator it can it is asking is it comma is it semicolon pipe or tab so different files can be treated here uh, in my case is just going to be comma 
now also you can select the first row if uh, the first uh, row number that is read first in all files for the copy if the value is set to 2 the first row is very every file header row is skipped during the load so in my case i'm going to use infer column names that means my first row is a header row so string delimiter you can do uh, single quote double quotes and all that my files are very simple file no delimiter or anything is right there so it is just i'm leaving to default you can use a default type and uh, see the definition specify how to handle missing values in the delimited text files when retrieving data from the text file so you can change to true or false you can also change the max string length in my case i'm going to leave everything default and hit to continue then it is asking me hey which server pool you want to use it's a built-in pool either as a serverless sql pool and which database so let's use the tech db and there are options for us to use other ones but we are going to use a tech db here it is asking you provide me schema and table name so i'm going to call this one uh, users that's the name of uh, my table db.users and using sql script i'm going to go ahead open this uh, so i can show you different components so that it is going to create or different object it is going to create uh, now if it is uh, the very first thing it is checking uh, from the external file formats uh, so you see right there it is checking for a for file format uh, this name synapse delimited text format because uh, if it is there it is going to drop it and uh, then uh, uh, sorry it is not going to create it if it is there otherwise it's going to create our file format with the definition that we have provided with the ui so remember that we were providing comma first row is second row is because the first row is a header and the other options are there so it's going to go ahead and when we run this script is creating this if i go to workspace and here go to the database and here tech db here in the external resources you will see file format so if once this file format is created you you need to read other files you can use the same file format in table creation the definition so now the next part is okay it is going to create external data source in that it tells which container we need to read that file and uh, what is the storage name so that's what it is and uh, that's our data source it's checking if it is already already existing if not it is going to create in our case it does not exist so it is going to create if i will click right here now and uh, now refresh you will see we have a synapse container uh, this data source is created so this uh, data source can be used over and over because if you are pointing to the same container and same storage it you will be using over and over in your tables now here is the definition for your table and it says create external table dba users id integer that's our first column so if i will take you right here and uh, let's say we go to storage i'm going to go to this storage here is my container and in the container i have input folder and here is my csv file so if i will show you file my file has id first name last name and salary so if i go back here these are the columns that auto detected because we said infer schema so that's why these column came and now it is given f name and worker 4000 l name and worker 4000 and salary big integer so i'm going to leave everything as is and in the create external table it need uh, three things uh, it need location and uh, remember that uh, we our file is existing in the input folder and uh, then uh, our file name is uh, this one okay so that's what uh, we have to provide so next uh, it is asking data source that we created on top of that that is points to the in which container this folder exists and in which uh, storage so that is that's where the data source is very important you have to have pointer to the uh, container and uh, the storage so once it know that then it will go further into the folders in the this location uh, parameter and here is the file format how to format your file while reading it so these three things we are required as we have created let's say data source and file format let's say if we load another file in the same folder or even different folder we can simply change the path and then we can uh, go ahead and create a new table as well as long as in the, the uh, when i said in the in the different folder yes but uh, the container should be the same so now let's go ahead and uh, execute this it's going to create uh, a table and uh, then uh, we can simply run the select query to see the data
So here is our dbo.users table and you can see uh, there are columns. Those are ID, first name, last name and salary. I can uh, always uh, go ahead and uh, click right there on these uh, dots and then go to new query and select the top 100 rows. And then once I run it, now I don't have to do all those uh, writing of open queries and everything. It is simple query. Always go to this table and uh, then uh, just uh, select everything that I need. And uh, as uh, this is uh, going to be saved, you know, we don't have to come back. It's not going to delete the definition and everything. So this uh, TechDB will always keep this external table definition here for us. And uh, we, it is very easy for us uh, to come and uh, query that. Also, sometime uh, you might be uh, having users that you don't want them to files and everything. So that's great because you will just create the external table and give them permission. Now let's go ahead and take a look uh, on the parquet file and I want to show you how to create the external table from the parquet file. Here is our parquet file in this uh, container and in this folder input. I'm going to right click here, go to the uh, new SQL query and uh, create external table. And uh, it's not asking the question uh, the other uh, uh, UI ask when we were creating the uh, external table from the CSV. Because it has the columns and that's pretty much it. There are no common delimiter and all those kind of things. So max string length is 4000. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and say click next. And I'm going to call this one dbo.park. So that's our table. Let's open the script. And it also shows you exactly the same thing. So first of all, it is creating the file format. And this is in a file format. that is given for parquet. So it is given the name of Synapse Parquet Format. You can give the name that you like. And then it is telling the type is a Parquet. So if you create this file format for this specific file, you can keep using them if you have the other files exactly in the same format. So we can go ahead and create this file format. If I go to the external resources, I will refresh. What's going to happen? I can see now two external file formats, one for CSV and one for Parquet. So you can see right here, uh, these should be two and I'm not sure why they are shown for, but anyways, these are two, one for CSV and one for a parquet. So file formats are available. Now, if you see here, it is uh, trying to create the data source as well. So this data source, it took almost the same name. So that's, it's not going to create a new data source because we are pointing to the same container and we are pointing to the same storage. So even I execute this query, it is going to check. And as the data source already does exist, it's not going to do anything. So that's what I was telling you. If you have a data source already pointing to the storage and container, you can reuse it. You don't have to create a new one. Uh, same way file formats as well. If uh, you have the same type of files, you create one file format. Uh, that will be true for other file files if they are the sa same formatted files. Now let's create uh, this external table and it always read the ID, F name, L name, salary and all that from Parquet file. And then uh, it is a check in uh, all those three parameters. Where exactly is the location? So input folder and this is my file name Parquet file and then use the data source and then finally it uses the file format because it's parquet file and it has created a new format and that's what it is going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this and also we can use the select query at the end to see the data. And now you can see that the table is created and it is showing us the data here. So if I go to the tables again and refresh, you can see that the first one was DBO users that was created from CSV file and dbo.parquet that is created from parquet file. So now just to, to summarize, uh, this is very easy to maintain because uh, once you create these external tables, you never have to worry where the files are and all that gives some good names. Uh, and you can always come here and query those uh, files uh, by using external tables. Uh, second part is uh, these uh, all uh, um, views are available. So there are tons of uh, system views available uh, to take a look uh, such as, uh, hey, I want to take a look on the columns. I want to take a look on the tables and all that. So this is also available to you. So it helps. Uh, let's say this is all the tables it is showing you right here. If you want to go further down there and see like hey, which columns and all that. So this is also available. So information schema dot uh, columns that will give you list of columns right here. OK. So I have another video there where I explain a lot more of these system views so you can take a look from there too.
So see right there, it is showing you tables and then it is showing you the list of those columns and the data types and whatever. So you can use these all system views here as well. I thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.